If you think you know how to count correctly in SQL, you're probably wrong because if you miss this one tiny detail, you can really fuck up your results. And come on, everybody knows how to use the count function in SQL, but do you know the difference between count column and count star? Because although they look the same, they actually calculate very differently. And don't forget to subscribe. Today, we'll cover count star and what it actually counts, count column and what it ignores and how it can actually ruin all of your results, and how both behave differently when you join together tables with different joins. By the end of this video, you'll be a pro at counting in SQL and you'll never make the same mistake that I did as an intern. Let's dive in, shall we? Okay, we're gonna get started with our orders table. So I just have select star from orders. We have order ID, product ID, customer ID, order date, shipping date, lots of different order fields in this table. And by the way, I made this data set with ChatGPT and you can too. You just have to have the right prompt to make good data sets. So let's first answer a really simple counting question. How many orders do we have in this table? Of course, we can just look at the number of rows right here. It says there are 5,000 rows. And since we know that this table is an orders table, Table, every single row is gonna be a different order. Therefore, we have 5,000 orders, but let's actually count this in SQL. So we can use our handy dandy count function. If you're familiar with Excel or other coding tools, it's very similar. This is an aggregate function. And what we put inside of this function is gonna determine the results that we get. The easiest way to count the number of orders in this table is to just count the number of rows. And the way we do this in SQL is count star. So count star is the number of orders. And again, we're gonna get 5,000 because we already know there are 5,000 rows in this data set, but I'm gonna run it and we got 5,000. So count star here is counting the number of rows. The other way we can do this is by using count column, but what column should we count? Going back to our original orders table, we could count the order ID column. Let's try that and see what happens. And that's interesting. We got 5,000 here too. This is so unexpected. Just kidding, it's not unexpected at all. And the reason why is because order ID is the primary key of the table and the primary primary key of a table has a unique non-null value for every row in the table. So it's a unique identifier for every single row in the table. That means it has to be unique, no duplicates and non-null. So it can't have any null values. So by counting on the primary key column of our table, we're basically just counting the number of rows again or counting the number of primary key values. And in this case, we got the exact same thing. So it really doesn't matter which way we use. And I will say that count star and counting primary key should always give you the exact same result. If you get different numbers here, you need to look into your data quality and figure out if you have any null values in your primary key column. And although we got the exact same results for both methods in this case, I will say that count star is a more optimized solution. It's much easier and faster for SQL to count all the rows instead of looking at all the individual values of a column. So use count star instead of count column when you're counting the primary key column or the number of rows in the table. And by the way, if you're brand new to SQL, you have to check out my free intro to SQL course below where you'll build your first SQL project in only 30 minutes. It's perfect for complete newbies, so please do not be intimidated. Go ahead and sign up even if you're scared. If you already have the basics of SQL down and you're ready to start building projects, building a portfolio, and getting ready to job search, head on over to my intermediate course. Links to both are below. But what happens if we count a column that is not the primary key of a table? So let's look at our shipping date column, for example. Let's see how many shipping dates we have have for orders. So if we count the shipping date column, let's see what we're gonna get. We only got 4,315. That means we didn't count every single row in the table. And if we go back and look at our original orders table, it's because we have null values in this column. So if there's a null value, it's not gonna be counted in the count function when you're using count column. And this is the real big difference between count star and count column. Count star is just counting all the rows. Count column is counting all the non on null values in that column, which is why count primary key column is the same as count star because it can never have null values. But if you're counting a column that has null values or could potentially have null values, you don't wanna use count star, you wanna use count column. So that way you're not counting the nulls. And now looking at one more basic example before we move on and really crank things up a little bit, if we do count product ID and count a foreign key in our table, we still get 5,000 in this case. So it still is counting the 
the number of rows. But it's not always gonna be the same for all foreign keys. It really depends on if it's allowed to have null values or not. So although there can be very interesting patterns with primary keys and foreign keys when counting, the real question you have to ask is, could there potentially be null values or not? Do I wanna count all the rows or do I wanna count all the non-null values? Because count star is the least conservative way to count. So if you use count star, you have to make sure that it's okay if you count nulls and duplicates. And since I mentioned duplicates now, since we got 5,000 on the count of the product ID column, does that mean that we have 5,000 different products? I'm gonna give you a second to think about it. The answer is no. I mean, it's possible but we don't. We can actually go look at our products table and we can see that we have 20 products, that's it. But since products can be ordered multiple times, they're probably gonna show up multiple times in the orders table, which is gonna cause duplicate values in our product ID column. But they're not duplicates in a bad way, they're duplicates because there have been multiple orders with the same product. But by using count product ID, we're actually counting all of the non-null product IDs, which is also all the rows because we can't have a null product ID in this table, but that's not the number of unique or distinct products. So if we wanna count the number of distinct products in the table, we have to put the word distinct before the column name. And now this is gonna give us the number of distinct product IDs in our orders table. And you'll notice it's 15. We just looked in the products table and we have 20 total products. That means that there are five products that have not been ordered yet and are not in the orders table. So when you're counting in SQL, you need to not only be thinking about null values, but you also need to be thinking about duplicates. Sometimes nulls and duplicates are okay, but you just have to understand how it's gonna affect your final count and results. So real quick, I'm actually gonna tell you a story about a time I really screwed up as an intern because I didn't understand the different ways to count in SQL. When I was a little baby data analyst intern, I thought that I knew everything about data analytics and I honestly had way too much confidence as an intern. The company I worked for was a SaaS tech product and we had orders that could go through all of these different statuses. And we had reports that a bunch of orders were hitting this one bad status, this error. And I was asked to count how many orders that day had hit that error status. So you know what I did? I just said, okay, let's do it, count star. And I sent over the number of orders, which was like 2,000. And they said, how is that possible? We don't even have 2,000 orders per day. I miscalculated. And that's when I realized it's possible for orders to go through the same status multiple times. So I accidentally counted the same orders over and over and severely overestimated my counts. The answer was supposed to be like 400 and I reported 2000, which was so embarrassing because I sent it to stakeholders, my manager, our leadership, and it's all because I didn't truly understand the business context of what I needed to count and I didn't count the correct way in SQL to match that business context. So honestly, it was a tough mistake to learn, but the fact that I still remember it after all of these years, and I don't think I've ever made that mistake again, it was a really good lesson for me to learn. So I hope my sad story in this video helps save you from that same agony that I experienced. <laughs> Before we move on to counting with joins, I'm just going to briefly recap what we've covered so far, since I know it was a lot of information at once, and I want to make sure we have a solid understanding before moving on. Count star counts all the rows or records in a table or result set, and it counts everything. So it's not going to care about nulls and duplicates. It's just just gonna count those two and include nulls and duplicates in the count. Count column is gonna count all of the non-null values in a column. So it's gonna count duplicates, but it's not gonna count the null values. And in many cases, count star is gonna be the same as count column, especially if you're working in a column that has non-null values, like a primary key column. But lots of times these are gonna produce very different results. And if you wanna count distinct non-null values, you're gonna have to use count distinct column. And I have these listed in order of efficiency as well. If you're thinking about SQL query optimization. And now let's get into some joins. So right here, I have the orders table, left join to the products table, and I'm counting star for num rows, and I'm counting the order ID from the orders table. And I'm grouping this by product or product name, as you can see here in the select statement. And our output has all 20 of our products. And we can see that most of the time it yields the same result when we use count star versus count order ID from the orders table. Because think about it, we're joining all of the orders onto the products table and then we're counting all the orders per product. So it's gonna be the same as counting the number of rows. But the one edge case where the counts are not gonna be the same are these products right here. If we actually sort in descending order, we have these five ones down here. So for the count star counting method, we have a count of one for these five products, but zero orders. 
What could that possibly mean? If you remember a few minutes ago, I mentioned that we had five products that had no orders placed yet and are not in the orders table. These are those five products. So since we left join the orders table onto the products table, we're not gonna be filtering out those products that don't have orders. They're still gonna be in the results, even though they don't have any orders, which means we're gonna get a positive count for the count star method because these products are still gonna be in the join because it was left joined to the products table, but the count will be zero for count order ID because these products don't have any order IDs. There's nothing to count. And to show you what I mean, here's the same query, except I just took out all the aggregations, all the group by, all the fancy stuff. This is just the orders table left joined onto the products table. So we can see this is the products table. And then if we scroll over far enough, the orders table starts. Let's go to the null order IDs. So here's all the null order IDs. So we can see that there is no order information for these five records. And what are these five records? If we keep scrolling over, these these are the five products that don't have any orders yet. These five right here are in the products table, but have zero orders. And because we did a left join onto the products table, they're gonna be included in the output. And each of these product IDs have exactly one row in the output with the null order information, which is why they have a one for the count star count. And going back to our first query, we can add in where order ID from the orders table is null. And here we go. These are the five products that don't have any orders, but are showing up in this left join. And sure, a count of one versus a count of zero might not seem like a huge Huge difference and numerically it's not, but it might make it look like these products have orders. If you were to name this column num orders instead of num rows, it could deceptively make it look like these products have orders and cause a lot of confusion. So not only do you have to think about duplicates and nulls when you're counting, you also have to think about how your join might affect your counts. Because if you don't do the right thing, a lot of spooky stuff can happen. So now you know the difference between count star and count column and why it actually matters. This is one of the most deceptively simple things to do in SQL because everybody thinks they know how to count in SQL, but they might not understand the true nuances of the counting function. If you've ever wondered why your counts don't match exactly between two queries, now you have one thing that you can look into to figure out why. Head on over to my next video where we're gonna get down and dirty with some more SQL and don't forget to subscribe. Come on, please subscribe, I know you want to. Sending you lots of big data energy your way, bye.